Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have three stories for you this week. First, DJI takes the Department of Defense to court over its Chinese military company label. Second, the popular DJI Mini 4 Pro gets a huge update, and I mean it, and you'll see this is actually good news. Uh, and then third, drones that play a crucial role in rescuing two lost teenagers in Colorado. Let's get to it. And first up this week, DJI is pushing back legally against the US Department of Defense. Now, on March 14th, DJI filed a motion in federal court that challenges the Department of Defense designation as a company that is a military Chinese company, or the CMC. Now, this label comes under Section 1260H of the 2021 National Defense Authorization Act, which targets companies that are supposedly linked to the Chinese military. Now, DJI argues use this designation that was first applied in October of 2022 and reaffirmed this past January and says that it is arbitrary, uh, lacking substantial evidence and also harms their business significantly. Now, the company points to the terminated contracts that they've had and in state level restrictions that were placed like in Florida or Arkansas uh, that limit or ban the use of their drone by public safety agencies. Now, DJI is asking the court to declare that the DOD actions are unlawful and then to also remove them from the CMC list. Now, they claim that the DOD ignored a detailed delisting petition that was submitted last July and then also failed to provide the public justification for the listing in the first place, as is required by recent amendments. Now, DJI contests the DOD claims about state ownership, stating that its founders and then the early investors hold the vast majority of the stock and the voting rights with the state-owned entities having minimal shares. They also dispute the idea that having a National Enterprise Technology Center status links them to the military, noting that companies like Volkswagen, for example, uh, also hold the civilian-focused status. Now, this situation definitely highlights the tension that are going on right now uh, between the national security concerns and then the reliance on DJI drones. That is especially true for first responders who face much higher costs for alternatives. Uh, a GAO report the court recently noted that the Department of Interior's uh, costs have jumped significantly after shifting away from DJI. And we'll keep you posted if we hear more in this case as it develops. And next up, there are some exciting news for the DJI Mini 4 Pro owners. Uh, DJI has released a major update of its mobile SDK. Uh, that's the uh, software development kit, if you're not familiar with the term, uh, specifically for version 5. Now, this update now includes support for the Mini 4 Pro, which is a pretty big deal. This is something that people have been asking for a long time. Now, what this means is that third-party developers can now create apps that work directly with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. Uh, we're talking about popular apps like Litchi, Drone Deploy, Drone Harmony, and potentially uh, others that can offer features like advanced flight automation, uh, custom waypoint missions, and then better mapping capabilities. Now, this really unlocks some of the pro-level functionality for drones that weigh under 250 grams. Uh, now, there's one important catch here that you need to know. Uh, to use these third-party apps with the uh, SDK, uh, you must be using the DJI RCN2 controller. That's the one that uses your smartphone as the screen. Now, unfortunately, the DJI RC2 controller, the one that has the built-in screen, uh, doesn't have MSDK support. Uh, that means that the Mini 4 Pro can't use it at this time. Uh, DJI hasn't said if it's going to change that or not, but uh, we'll keep you updated for sure. This update also adds MSDK support for the uh, Matrice 4D and the Matrice 4TD, the thermal version. So if you're flying the Mini 4 Pro and you have the RCN2, make sure to keep an eye out for the update uh, for your favorite flight planning app. Next up this week, a great story showing drones in action saving lives. Uh, we had one last week and we have another one this week. Uh, two teenagers get lost while hiking near Carpenter Peak in Colorado's uh, Roxboro State Park last Saturday evening. Uh, they did the right thing. They basically called 911 and stayed put. Uh, Douglas County Search and Rescue, along with the Colorado Park and Wildlife, uh, were able to respond around 8.30 p.m. And as the ground crew started to hike, they had a DCSAR a drone team that led by uh, Darren Kerala that launched the drone. Uh, despite windy conditions, the drone quickly located the two teens uh, who were flashing a light uh, while sheltering under a tree. Uh, using the drone's GPS data, they were able to pinpoint the exact location and then basically streamline the effort and send the team over there to get them. 
One of the cool things about the story is that they were able to use a drone speaker, uh, which allows one of the teenager's dad, who, who was at the scene, to talk directly with their kids uh, and uh, give them words of encouragement. Uh, the rescuers eventually reached the teens and then guided them safely back down, uh, using the drone as a spotlight to help light the way. Uh, this whole rescue took uh, about two and a half hours. Uh, it's another fantastic example of how drones are becoming invaluable tools for uh, search and rescue operations amongst other other uh, operations. And it's uh, also a good reminder to have uh, a plan when you go hiking, and then especially as the days are getting uh, nicer outside, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be heading out, so uh, make sure that you know what you're doing out there. And then last up, you may or may not have noticed actually, but we are finally in our new building. Uh, this is the first video that we are recording here in this new studio. Uh, we're still working on some uh, arrangements. Uh, the sound is not great, you may have noticed, uh, but uh, we spent the last couple of weeks moving all of the gear, tearing down the old set that we had, uh, building the new ones here, uh, setting them up. Uh, we've still got a lot of work to do. Obviously, we've got a lot of courses that we're gonna record. Uh, and then with this new uh, building, we're going to be able to offer in-person training. So uh, that's coming out very soon. And then next week, uh, because we're not busy enough, we're going to be at Sun and Fun in Florida. So if you're in the area uh, near Lakeland, Florida, uh, be sure that you stop by. The show starts on Tuesday of next week and it's going to go all the way until Sunday. Uh, we have a booth, we have the team over there. So uh, stop by and say hi. We have a lot of goodies and then we love to talk to you guys. All right. And we'll be back the following Monday for live Q&A finally after I think missing three weeks in a row uh, and then that Friday for our Friday live and we'll see you then and fly safe. Now DJI contests that the DJI, no. Now DJI contests, one more time. We have four stories, no it's three, read the script. Mm -hmm.